Welcome back to our uh, video lectures on the economical thought of Antonio Rosmini. And uh, now in this uh, fifth and last uh, video lecture, now we, we will consider some, some last aspects and um, try to come to certain conclusions, also to uh, certain uh, conclusions about not only the interpretation of Hoebel on uh, the philosophy of right on Rosmini, but also another recent interpretation of this work. Now, let's go on uh, with a certain order. In the last two video lectures, we have considered not only the roots of the order liberalists and uh, some elements in common uh, with uh, the Rosminian idea of economics, but also the ambiguous position that Hegel assumes in this theoretical context. The interpretation of ethical life in reference to Hegel is not only clarificatory, but also dangerous. Indeed, it has to be underlined that the reference is only at the beginning of the philosophy of right, where Hegel affirms not against Kant, but in order to fulfill his theoretical novelties, the, necessi ne the necessary social dimension of liberty and its guarantee by social institutions. This concerns the, necess the necessary social dimension of liberty and this dimension realizes a social moment of liberty, which is not a stageful one, but it is one requested by liberty itself. We can retain that the social dimension of the social market economy is to be understood in this way and in this way the beginning of the philosophy of right of Hegel can uh, be read, read in a very positive way. Liberty requires itself in the continental, tra continental tradition recognition and this recognition focuses on the other. Relationships and therefore minimal social relationships like society and for others also family or religion are constitutive for the realization of human liberty and dignity. They make sure that the social structure of liberty, of liberal society, is not only determined by concurrence, this is the concept of classic liberalism, is not only determined by cooperation, this is the concept of other liberalism, and it is not only determined by non-interference, this is the concept of libertarianism, but also by so solidarity. And here we have also the little difference between social market economy and order liberalism. This solidarity does not risk the liberal ground intention, only it, it does not risk it, only if it is affirmed on the individual basis and not as a political issue. And this is the difficult point of social market economy. This is the difficult point uh, of a relationship also to certain uh, thinkers and, uh, um, and for this difficult point which is today also in discussion and which is also different for, then from uh, conceptions of welfare state and others, uh, we have to be very carefully and I think uh, Rosmini can give us a good lecture uh, to be very exactly in this point. According to the fundamental principles of liberalism, this solidarity cannot be imposed against the individual freedom. It has to derive from the fact of liberty itself. Only in this way it is founded in the principle of liberty. Only in this way it is compatible with a liberal approach. Otherwise, not. Already the perspective of individual basic rights and liberties offers such a dimension because one must consider that the right and guarantee of life as the fundament of every subject for possessing anything and for pursuing his happiness includes one's physical subsistence. This dimension indeed is fundamentally common to Rosmini and the thinkers of social market economy. We uh, read in Röpke, who retains soci society as a mere association of individuals, which can be thought with the logical reason of the individual, is brought inevitably to the consequence that first nothing can be tolerated in a society which is not the object of the clear conscience of the individual, 
Nothing which is the unplanned and unconscious result of enumerated singular acts as the price of steel or the interest on capital. And second, that human reason is enough not only to catch society as a whole and the economy, but also to conduct it according to a conscious plan in its entirety. With this last consequence, something curious has occurred in individualism, which is found in line with liberalism. Liberalism has eliminated itself and has become collectivism, which is still in the name of reason and the individual, but truthfully under the perversion of all the authentic and original ideals of liberalism. So we have in the social e market economy conception not only the exigency that every social dimension, that every um, dimension of solidarity realized in society has to be founded in the individual rights approach, but also the consideration that without a minimal juridical affirmation of the dimension of solidarity, the liberal approach itself, the individualistic approach itself of liberty, would end in a certain, in certain, in, in, in a certain anatomy, in a certain paradox. The society as relationship of individuals which is constitutive for individual liberty and therefore are important, the institutions which are realizations of liberty, in order to promote the development of the, relation dim of the relational dimensions of liberty. For Osmini, the foundation is not placed in the state, but in the individual, also if in uh, the last analyst in the supernatural dimension of liberty, which is represented in church. And therefore church in Rosmini has an uh, institutional dimension and uh, institutional importance. Because uh, thanks to the theocratic society, we have an uh, over-individual foundation of liberty which is not, uh, com which is not contradictious to the individual dimension itself. We have a, a foundation of relationship which is not in concurrence to the methodological individualism itself. This makes sure that relational status of liberty between all the individuals and human mankind is fundamentally affirmed. And so the, uh, so the, the um, theocratic society in Rosmini is only partially realized in church. Church is only a visible dimension of it. In its invisible and ontological dimension, all human mankind has a fundamental social structure, said Rosmini. So in its natural constitution, personhood is not individualistically reduced. In its natural constitution, human nature is relational. Human nature is relational because in the supernatural vision all human beings are sons and daughters of the uh, divine creator. So the Theocratic uh, society gives us a notion, but this notion is not a, a religious credo, it is not a religious affirmation. But it's the affirmation of the fundamental solidaristic structure of human being in itself, of the fundamental solidaristic structure of liberty itself. It's, an, uh, uh, it's a part of the ontology of liberty uh, itself. So, this is uh, the, the very important dimension of theocratic society in Rosmini. And uh, for Rosmini, um, this social structure of liberty is affirmed in the beginning, in the first paragraphs when Rosmini, um, when Rosmini explains the theocratic society in his uh, social right. In comparison to libertarianism, becomes now clear how Rosmini does not present uh, individualistic, a patrimonialistic conception of society as it was also often attributed to him.
Indeed, he thinks the constitutional dimension only as a constitutional law state, but he does not exclude the representative dimension of personhood. Personhood has its, its, has its individual dimension, has its social uh, uh, relation, and uh, this structure of individual liberty um, is able to be represented uh, uh, in a constitutional way. Rosmini founds on this idea of liberty, his idea of constitutional state. In this constitutional state we have in Rosmini, without any doubt, a uh, uh, um, um, uh, right of um, vote, a, so uh, a suffrage, which is only for people, for rich people, for people who have uh, individual property. The indigents, uh, the people who don't have individual property, cannot contribute democratically to the political, uh, uh, um, to the political sphere. But this does not mean that Rosmini has a patrimonialistic structure and that in this patric patrimonialistic structure Rosmini would be similar, would be close to a libertarian conception, as uh, we see in um, the opinion of uh, Freeman, who, who uh, comparised uh, um, the libertarianism also in a certain sense with feudalistic uh, structures. We have in Rosmini the representation more in a juridical way, not uh, such in a uh, direct uh, democratic way. And this juridical representation we have in the political tribune. The political tribune, without any doubt, uh, is also considered in uh, the book of Hoebel, um, but not in this fundamental sense that a fundamental representation of person, of individual personship, we have in the political tribune. And uh, the political tribune is voted by all. We have a universal suffrage on this politi uh, political tribune. But now we cannot go very much in, deep, in a deeper analysis uh, of this um, concept, but we can consider also for actual dimension that a fundamental representative dimension we have also in the juridical conception of Rosmini. And we see that we have not a direct foundation of the democratic principle in Rosmini, but the democratic principle is represented in the juridical dimension. So Rosmini resolves things in the juridical dimension, many, many aspects, which then in, uh, in, in the following decades and in the following centuries, we, uh, we can say, uh, was uh, then declined uh, uh, with the principles of democracy and the, with the principles of solidarity. But Rosmini has this fundamental representation not only in the juridical sense of the political tribune, in this sense in, in which Hövel sees rightly something uh, in Rosmini, but this we have also in the institution of church. The institution of church is not only in an institution of private faith, of private benevolence and of charity. Church has its juridical structure, its uh, institution, it's a social institution in the thinking of Rosmini about society and about the, so the, the social realities. We cannot negate this fact. In, in Hövel, we have a consideration of the church in the very actual sense in which church in liberal societies is collocated today. But we have not a, a very institutional consideration of the, of the theocratical society uh, in Rosmini. Benevolence is uh, not only led to the liberty of the rich, it is not only uh, in a certain sense, um, moral, uh, a moral appeal to the rich. It is not only a moral practical with the church does in confront to the rich. It is also institutionalized in the church's activity. 
often we forget that church is the first and the most important particular society in Rosmini's philosophy of right. Whoever reads this book, also the social right, if we said in the first video lecture, in a moral point of view, in our actual point of view, aiming at the consideration of the civil society and leaving nearly beside the considerations of the other two societies, which for the comprehension of Rosmini's concept of right are almost more important. Therefore, it is an error in Rosmini's reading when he affirms that Rosmini interprets the social role of the church only as a moral and spiritual influence. And again, Hövel says, it is reflected in his great work, De la Cinque Pai Piage della Santa Chiesa, according to Rosmini, Christianity and the Church should not act directly as factors of power in the political and social scene, but indirectly through the spiritual, moral and cultural transformation. It is right that church does not di act directly in civil society, but it is, uh, it is subsidiarily um, in, a, in a relationship of subsidiarity with uh, the civil society, or uh, better, better said, vice versa, civil society is in a subsidiarity relationship to the other two types of society. And we don't have to forget this important factor. So we cannot read the church, the theocratical society in Rosmini, only in a moral or spiritual way. We have to read it in an institutional way. According to Hervel, beneficence can be realized for Rosmini only by indirect influence of the ecclesiastical society as a love communion. And Hövel said, if beneficence is not something of a state nature, but a right of the heart which cannot be usurped or imposed, either by external law or by force, it is therefore by nature an eminently ecclesial thing. And this, without any doubt, it is a it is right, it is highly right. Yes, yet the solution to this great problem must be sought in Jesus Christ. He has instituted the church and charged her to succor all human misery. Also, this is right, but it's only right to the half. Because on the other half, uh, the church remains a social re uh, reality. And not only a social reality, but a socially instituted reality. And so the institutional point of view, which we considered not very much present in uh, uh, Hövel's lecture of Rosmini's thought, uh, here becomes indeed very important. Because the relationships between the three societies, we can only think of institutional relationships. And these institutional relationships are not institutional relationships as we think today about civil society, of church, of family, as uh, non-political actors. For Osmini, they are also, in a certain way, political actors, uh, but in uh, a horizontal, um, a subsidiary way, um, all the three societies as different spheres of justice constitutes together, constitute together the social sphere. And so we have a sphere of uh, uh, a sphere of civil society, but also the other spheres are juridically regulated, and as juridically regulated, they are institutions. Again, it becomes clear that every reading of Rosmini in a nowadays perspective risks to reduce it to what we today intend with civil society. For Rosmini, the situation was much more complex, and many dimensions he attributed to the Church has to be read as considerations which today we have to evolve in order to civil society, in order to, uh, in, in order to that what we today call state. The indigents in Rosmini, in Hervel's perspective, would not be politically represented. But indeed, this is not true. Even if Rosmini does not think about universal suffrage and institutions for social redistribution, it does not seem to be a right interpretation not to consider the indigents as represented in the public sphere. 
to understand this better, we have to consider that for Osmini, in a quite traditional way, all benevolence is separated from the state. And also, this can be today a critical point of view uh, um, in the actual crisis also of welfare state, of, of social state. But uh, this would be the theme of another video lectures. And uh, 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 let's quote um, only, um, let's quote only uh, Rosmini's reasoning. Rosmini says, when we sacrifice the smallest good that is ours by right for the sake of someone else, we act benevolently. We are not bound under any dual obligation to make this sacrifice, either to spare the other person from the greatest possible evil or to produce for him the greatest possible good. Under the moral law of mutual benevolence, this is nevertheless an obligation to do this. There is always damage to right, always some violation of the moral dual law, when we force others, as a matter of fact, to make some sacrifice for us or to cause harm to third parties. This is a long quotation, uh, um, which now we cannot, re we, we, we cannot um, quote in all, um, uh, in, in all the extension. But Rosmin here he said that in the civil society, the right of property is the right of property. But there is also the aspect of benevolence, uh, the aspect of benevolence, which, which is not only led to uh, an individual moral point of view, because it is led to the, ins to the social institutionalization in a subsidiary way outside the more political juridical order uh, in the church. But uh, the church is outside civil society, but not outside the order in itself. And so in a nowadays perspective, we have to see or to, to consider that the, 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 that the dimension of social solidarity has to be considered. So Rosmini has the idea also of, a prin of principles of social state. But the principles of social state cannot be in concurrence and cannot be in contradiction to the foundation of individual right. So we have to bring them together. But the classical liberalism or libertarianism is unable to bring them together. Rosmini brings them, to them together in in his context, in his context, which is also the Italian context of, of the beginning of the 19th century, which is more the Catholic context, uh, all the liberalism and social market economy bring them together in another way. Bring them together in a, in a way which is uh, more, it, which is uh, uh, in, in, in a certain sense, the more the, the 20th century form of doing it. So we have two conceptions for Smini, social market economy, which which, which have the same fundamental institu in intuitions. And these same fundamental intuitions are declined uh, in one sense in a, in a Catholic institutional way in which church is really is, has, a, has a function also in public right and institutes in public right a sort of horizontal subsidiarity. This in a Protestant way where uh, we don't have this uh, horizontal subsidiarity between church and state, and in which all also this, uh, this, uh, din all this dimension of solidarity is integrated uh, in the idea of the, found of the uh, relationship of state and individual with the respect of the individual rights of person is declined in another way. But it is always a liberal way to consider the foundation of the solidarian aspect in the idea of public order. So we want to quote um, another thinker, another German thinker, who has pointed out uh, um, rightly this aspect, how to find in, in the sense of 
social market economy now the solidaristic aspect in a framework of on the basis in the principles of a liberal order and he said why the homo sapiens acquires moral significance only by the attribution of human rights our concept of personality is the basic concept of our moral cultural grammar of our self comprehension and therefore is considered a priori with normative significance so uh, what for Rosmini is uh, the realization of human being not only in civil society but before in theocratic society and in domestic society now in this aspect in the more protestant uh, um, uh, declination of the realization of human nature which is as we see more individualistic is the cultural grammar of our self comprehension Therefore, there is a great difference not only in the quantity but also in the quality between the guarantee of biological continuity and of existence on the one hand and the giving of material presuppositions to a personal and liberal conduct of life on the other. The first is to guarantee that people live and continue to exist. The latter requires a guarantee of minimum of personal liberty in which people are in need to be able to act and to conduct the life of a person. Regarding these two dimensions, the first as the social state consequence of classical liberalism, the latter as the order liberal and social market model, we, f we find individuated two aspects of the social state which cannot be justified only from a liberal point of view and which are in a, a, a which is uh, are therefore rejected and we have to reject it uh, from a liberal point of view without any doubt uh, a guarantee of democracy in a Rousseauian tradition or also a foundation of welfare state which is not um, in continuity and which does not respect individual liberty and the dignity of individual person which as we also s uh, have seen in Rosmini are founded in the relationship between individual personality and the relationship to the things and so when in the principle which Rosmini called the derivation of rights. So we have here two, um, two, concepts, two concepts which uh, uh, have surprisingly which can divide which divides surprisingly we have in, which have in common surprisingly um, some fundamental reasonings which complete in a certain sense the liberal tradition because they are not present in classical liberalism or in libertarianism but without becoming a conception of civil economy and it could now seem strange that Carlos Hoebel tries to interpret the economical conception of Rimismini in the tradition of civil economy, pointing out a presumptive cooperative character of the economical thought of Antonio Rosmini. This cooperative character, we haven't seen it in, 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 in no dimension which we analyzed uh, in our video lectures. Uh, Hoebel said, in fact, Rosmini has in mind societies such as those civil associations of mutual assistance of the medieval communes, which are against the non-civil power of the seigneur. Their spirit was fundamentally a corporate, non-individualistic spirit to the point that their struggles, they presented themselves as a compact team, frequently violent against the old nobility. Then he proceeds, always Hervel. Through these unions, the associations establish a series of common rights which the, with, with the aim of defending and potentializing them much better than if they were to exercise them separately. In this sense, Rosmini is not thinking of civil society in the liberal French fashion. This is without any doubt true. That is, as the product of a state that erupts into the civitas or the medieval commune in order to create rights and freedoms. We see here always the interpretation of Rosmini inserting them in a tradition, the medieval uh, Renaissance um, civil economy tradition. I see Rosmini very, very much as a predecessor, as an anticipator, as a prophet of fundamental intuitions of order liberalism and social uh, market economy. 
The civil society would be, says Hövel, an, an association of associations. So we have not the liberal aspect of civil society. It means that civil society is many individuals together on the basis of individual rights, not associations of associations. Therefore, it is not interpreted as the convergence of individual wills and therefore on the basis of individual rights, but as the association of associations. And these would be, as Hervel expressly says, the families. Now I retain that here lies a fundamental misunderstanding in the interpretation of the social thought of Antonio Rosmini. Indeed, Rosmini says that the society is the convergence of families. But in society do not, does not rule the family's relationship, but the social relationships which is artificial and not natural. Rosmini says, yeah, we have in the social in society together at, uh, the association of families. But which rule rules in society? It does not rule the rule of family. It rules the rule of person. Because the rule of family, says Rosmini, is always the rule of family egoism. It is always a rule of a solidarity which is confined in the, in the interior dimension of family. If we, have an if we have a society as an association of families, we won't have in any time a real common good. But family, because families are thinking for their own good. And this was Winnie's seed very well. And he seed it also for political parties and, and other institutions. So the real common good we have only on the basis of, of the recognition of individual fundamental uh, rights. If Rosmini himself distinguishes a natural association from an artificial one, how can we directly affirm a fundamental identity between both? It seems that Rosmini wanted to stress the divergency, not the comparability of family and civil society. No, I said uh, uh, dom domestic and theocratical society as moral institutions, as a moral expression of mm, human uh, person of the nature of the, the dimension of perfection of human uh, person, no? but civil society is subsidiary, subsidiarily um, the affirmation of individual rights. Therefore, Hövel comes closer to Rosmini's intention if he sees the social associations as little realizations of civil society. Yes, we can see all the social associations as little realizations of civil societies. So that also all social associations, the firms, the companies, but also political parties, but also spontaneous associations, have to respect always individuals, have to respect, respect always individual rights. They cannot establish a common good which would harm individual rights. But not so the associations as little civil societies, but not the civil society as, as association of associations. And, and indeed, for Osmini, it seems Civil society formulates the rule which all private associations should rule. But these rules are based on the idea that common good is related to individual right and not vice versa. For Osmini it is unthinkable that in the name of common good individual rights could be neglected. Only for the latter ones, not for the first one, is it possible to appeal to the political tribune. And so for the universal representative dimension of person in society. So we have not a personalization of society, but we have the universal respect of person in society through political tribune. Significantly, Hövel does not prove much these considerations, his considerations which we now criticized, with quotations from Rosmini's text, and in the unique quotation in these pages, in the footnote 18 on page 220, Rosmini affirms quite the opposite of what Hervel affirms. Here Rosmini indeed defines the state as a union of families, but under the condition that the rights of every individual and of every family are protected and regulated, and that these rights have to be exercised without collisions. Now, perhaps Hervel sees in this affirmation on the fundamental importance of family an indication for cooperative structures. 
But we don't have to forget that Rosmini, beyond his great consideration of family for its private relationships in contrariety to the political relationships in civil society, also warns of the egoism which these private structures can produce. Every private structure has this vice, from families to political parties. And Rosmini recurs to the universal principle of personhood as unique remedial for the danger of these egoisms which nourish the common good, which is not the common good of the family or the state, but of the whole mankind. Only a common good of the whole mankind is a real common good, says Rosmini. This consideration, taken by Hövel to prove definitively the civil economic character of Rosmini's thought, in reality affirms another time the, centrally, the centrality of individual personhood and the closeness to the conception of order liberalism. This dimension is even clearly stated by Hövel when he says, therefore, to the Roveratian, it is necessary that national societies and economies should be regulated in, the, in some way by a universal society. This is what Hövel says. But this affirmation remains without any critical consideration. This would be a consideration which associated Rosmini more to the other liberalists and not to the civil economy tradition. Hövel indeed affirms Rosmini agrees with the Italian civil economist philosophers who, as from Vico and Doria, consider that economic interests do not self-regulate but the mere invisible hand of the market by the mere invisible hand of the market, but that they require regulation by civil society. This affirmation in its contents, without any doubt, is a just interpretation of Rosmini's thought. But it doesn't prove the appurtenance of civil economy approaches, but as we have seen, it is also a central argument of social market economy. This becomes even more clear when Hövel affirms immediately, in effect, according to Rosmini, the way to achieve larger production and a fairer distribution of wealth is certainly that of a market where the interchange between individual interests play a leading role, although always within the rules of ethics and the law. What Hövel retains an argument for civil economy is in reality the proof of Rosmini's liberalism as anticipator of the order liberal concept. And if he claims then that ethical individual virtues better than social virtues would be better than social virtues, this argument would be even openly against civil economy model as Hövel himself recognizes. The distinction which in our consideration we required now against Hövel, the distinction between the moral perspective and the uh, liberal perspective, so between the moral and the juridical sphere, and which Hövel overcame in the reduction of the constitutional sphere to the morality of concrete economic action, therefore an an his anti-program to the libertarian conception, was superated also by the interpretation of the philosophy of right by Francesco Petrillo. We see that in the economist Hövel tends to a moralization and the jurist Petrillo aims to a juridicalization of Rosmini's philosophy of right. So we have the last two great interpretations of this central work of Antonio Rosmini, the last two books on this work, uh, present two significant reductionisms of uh, the idea of right in Antonio Rosmini. We have always the reduction of the distinction, of the precise distinction, of the moral foundation and of the juridical institutions. Hövel reduces them to the moral aspect. Petrillo reduces them to the institutional aspect of liberty without considering anymore the relationship of the juridical con uh, uh, institutions to the moral dimension, the moral dimension of personhood, which in Rosmini, without any doubt, is present. We stated against Hövel that only after the moral definition of right, the juridical science begins with the definition of juridical duty which is the respect for the moral liberty which is expressed in the right. But for Petrillo now, the last element of the definition of right is itself the juridical duty 
which is cognitively determinable on the basis of the conoscibility of liberty. This identification is therefore the opposite identification respect to Hövel. Uh, so, Petrillo reduces all the juridical dimension, the institutional dimension, on the dimension that we have a cognitive aspect of liberty. So, reduced to the cognitive aspect, and in this reduction to the cognitive aspect, we lose the moral dimension, the moral dimension of person. But we, see we have seen before that the uh, the structure of recognition, the fundamental structure of recognition, which is the founding of liberty and so of individual rights in Rosmini, it is not merely cognitive, it is recognitive, it is moral, it is respect, it is the practical recognition. And so we cannot, with Petrillo, reduce all the sphere of liberty to its cognitive aspect, to its juridical aspect. In this dimension, Hövel would be right against Petrillo, also if before Petrillo was right against Hövel. No? We have in Rosmini the distinction but not the separation between the moral dimension of person, the recognitive structure of liberty of person and the institutionalization of liberty in the concrete institutions of the philosophy of right. Rosmini does not admit any of these identifications. And Rosmini underlines, Rosmini says, all jural duties are indeed moral, but not all moral duties are jural. Jural duties have as their object the need to respect, that is not to remove or harm some activity proper to another person. Therefore, it does not seem correct to affirm that it is not only morality, or better, it is probably not morality which founds the recognition of rights. This is a, a sentence of Petrillo. It is not morality which founds recognition of rights. No, it is, it is morality which founds recognition of rights, but it is not uh, reducible to morality. And uh, Petrillo then says, but it would be rather the conscience understood as cognition. Here we have the reduction no, to the more cognitive dimension of liberty in Petrillo. Rosmini does not reduce the right to the moral action, nor he assigns only to the right the recognitive structure of interpersonal relationship. The liberal perspective of Rosmini affirms itself in the middle of both, and here we have the right middle, not the middle, the moral middle affirmed by Hövel, no? not the, mi the middle in the result, no? the middle in the principles, the middle in the principles which is the distinction but not the separation between liberty and uh, moral recognition. It is not morality and therefore a sort of non-cognitivistic affirmation of individual liberty and it is not the cognitivistic affirmation of liberty which would destroy individual autonomy and give to the state a cognitive dimension which was rightly negated by Hayek. In this aspect, Rosmini would be very, uh, uh, would be, uh, uh, would be underline this affirmation of Hayek. Rosmini's liberalism is anti-perfectivistic in both matters, morally as well as socially without negating the importance nor of the moral neither of the moral dimension nor of the social one. This is the specific affirmation of human dignity by Rosmini, which recurs only in the order liberal tradition. So we have another proof uh, that Rosmini is a very prophet, a very anticipator of the order liberal tradition. This means probably Properly, a Rosmini argu the Rosminian argument for not considering any more this concept, uh, the concept also of order liberalism, of social market economy, not only a German model. This interpretation that we find in Rosmini, a real anticipator of this model, shows us that it is also an error to consider this model as, uh, uh, as uh, globally it is considered a more germ German model, but to propose its principles as possible remedies against the actual crisis. The Rosmini reading of order liberalism and social market economy can have also this positive output to see in this model not only a national or a regionally limited uh, conception, but a real universal conception based on 
uh, rethinking on a new foundation, on a, on a new declination of what liberty is, on a new moral and juridical consideration of liberty to rethink our concrete social structures in the actual crisis. And with these considerations, I thank you very much for your attention and, uh, uh, for, to, and for have uh, um, listened to all these five video uh, lectures about the economical thought of Antonio Rosmini. Thank you very much again and uh, till the next time.